church and good evening to all our online viewers let us pray heavenly father we come before you this evening god and we thank you that we should be found in your house father we thank you lord that we should gather in this fashion to praise and worship and give honor to your name father father we pray that as we've been waiting upon you today lord god as we've been seeking you lord god earnestly as we've been fasting and praying god that pray that tonight you'll meet us at the point of our need here tonight father you will meet somebody lord that's been trusting you for a breakthrough that's been needing a touch from you lord and father you will do a great work tonight father even as the praise and worship goes forth i pray for the 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 instruments and i pray for the praise and worship team lord god use their mightily father to bring forth your presence this evening god father we pray for your for the servants of this house and we pray lord god that you will use him to deliver a word lord god that will speak to us in spirit and in truth my god that will minister lord to somebody that needs a word this evening lord god that needs a touch from you lord god and father we thank you and as we further continue lord you will bless us and bless each and every person yet that has come here tonight lord in jesus name amen amen hallelujah let's put our hands together let's begin to worship the lord hallelujah
will never fail. Your name is powerful. Your words unstoppable. It's all possible in you. God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think. Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful.
believe you don't just sing it out to the Lord. That Jesus Christ. We lift our hands in worship. We believe in you, Jesus. Oh. I believe in you. I believe in you, God. And I, I believe you rose again. You rose again. And I
Listen up for our following announcements. Groom for Life kicked off last Thursday and it was a great success. The future generation is being prepared to walk God's path and are learning about all the skills God has instilled in them to help them conquer every trial. Stay connected to find out when our next session takes place. God truly is making a move.
This November, we will be having a three-day family fast. Together, as a church, we will take this time to deepen our relationship with the Everlasting Father. We encourage our kids to join with us and learn about the importance of fasting. This fast will take place between the 1st and the 3rd of November. God's kingdom is growing and we are overjoyed to have so many families become part of the family church. We'll be having a new families orientation on Thursday the 11th of November. If you're a new member of the church, be sure to attend this important gathering where you learn about the family church's vision and mission and find out just what the church is about. We're so excited to see you there. You can register on our church number. The Legends Christmas. It's that time of the year again and our legends are helping us kick off the Christmas season with our very own Christmas get together. This will take place on Thursday the 25th of November. So if you're 60 and over, you're a legend. Be sure to join the festivities and register by the church communication number. Everyone, I greet you in Jesus' name. Well, it's that time of the year again, and another opportunity for you to be a blessing to somebody this Christmas. We are pleased to announce that the Family Church Buckets of Christmas Love Project 2021 will kick off on the last Sunday of this month, the 31st of October. The procedure is the same as last year. You will be provided with a grocery list to buy your groceries. Buckets have no charge this year as they have been sponsored. All buckets need to be in. No later, the fourth of December. Jesus said in Matthew 25 35, When I was hungry, he gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, he gave me something to drink. And when I was a stranger, you took me in. So we encourage you to be a part of this great community initiative and to be a blessing to somebody this Christmas. We look forward to your support and contribution. Thank you and God bless. And finally, let's get ready to enter and learn more about our God. Thank you for joining us here at the Family Church, serving and building the multi-generational family. Amen, amen, amen. Can we give Jesus a round of applause? Amen. Or rather, a praise offering. Amen. Amen. Has, been, has God been good to you? Amen, amen. I hope that you're enjoying the three-day family fast. Today is the second day. And sorry, good evening to our online viewers and to those that are in the church this evening. We're glad that you're in, found in the house of God this evening. And we're glad that you made the decision to be here to praise and worship our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. And like I was saying, I'll go back to my chain of thought there. For those of you that are in the family fast and we're in the second day, how many of you believe in trusting God for a breakthrough? Amen. Amen. Do you believe that God will come through for you? Amen. Amen. Don't be shaken. The trials will come your way. Obstacles will come your way, but don't give up in God. For God will make it possible. Amen. 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 And if those of you that haven't joined, it's not too late. We've all got one more day to go. So let's get into it. And let's trust God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so my scripture this evening is taken from Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Let's have a look at what God is doing. Give and it will be given unto you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Will it be poured into your lap? For with the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. Amen. So I'm just going to give you a, a quote that I read today. This is by Winston Churchill. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Amen. I'll repeat that again. We make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Whilst I was preparing for this, I was reading the story in Mark chapter 12, verse 41, about the widow and that was given and the blessed man that was there. And he gave out of his abundance. But the widow gave out of her poverty, so the Bible calls it. And she gave all that she had. And Jesus was sitting there and looked at this widow. And he said to his disciples, this lady has given more 
than the man that has given. And the reason that that is so is because she had the right heart. And when you have the right heart, it's more important than the amount that you give. It's more important than what you give. Because when God looks at you, God is not a God of money. God is a God of everything. So he's more interested in you, his child. Do you, do you all believe that you are children of the Most High God? Come on, church. Can I hear you? Do you believe that you are children of the Most High God? Amen, amen, amen. So tonight, and whenever you give, focus and get your heart right with God. Ask God, God, this that I'm giving, does it bring praise? Does it bring honor? And does it bring glory unto you? And when you have the right heart, then ask God, God, direct me as to what I need to do. Direct me as to where to give. And when God leads you and when you are obedient and you listen to the voice of God, God will bring all that he has given you together so that when you give, you will be blessed so much by what God has done through your life that it wouldn't even faze you as to what you've given, but rather the presence of God and God's goodness. Amen? Amen. So church, this evening, I just want to remind you that even this time that we're going through the Christmas time, where we share, let's share with the right heart. Let's not count the cost, but let's rather ask God, God, where do I need to give? What can I do for you that will bring you praise, honor, and glory? Amen. Can we all be in agreement with that? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Almighty God, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for this day that you've given us. Father, thank you for your joy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your love, Lord. I pray, Father, for each and every person that is here tonight and those that are online. I pray, Father, that even as we stand here, Lord, we are all trusting you for different things. But I believe, Lord, that you know the plan and purpose that you have for us, for that's what your word says. And Lord, we subject our lives unto you because, Lord, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So we thank you, Father, that even as we sow into your house, Lord, we pray, Lord, that we sow with a right heart and we also sow unto fertile ground. So we thank you right now, Lord, that even as we put this into your house, Lord, we know, Lord, that your blessings will be pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So, Father, we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, and much thanksgiving. Amen.
Jesus I surrender all to him my free family just cut off every distraction and perhaps tonight's message could be the turning point for your life you choose for God has given every one of us the opportunity to choose God says you choose life or you choose death mm. it's your choice tonight there is somebody that needs this word today you need a jolt you need a Holy Ghost jolt that's what you need tonight. You need a Holy Ghost jolt. You're not a Holy Ghost joltist. You need a shake up. And let all those things that are loose fall. And don't worry about the things that are loose. Because they were not founded upon the rock anyway. But only those things that remain are the things that are founded upon the rock and that rock is Christ Jesus and tonight I'm 
sitting there and I'm thinking, God, you placed this in my spirit tonight after listening to Angus Buchan a few days back. And I'm saying, Lord, why did you put this in my spirit? It's in line with where we are going as a church. It's in line with what God is wanting for us as a church. And it's a dangerous place to be. And let me not kid you. Let me not mislead you. When I say it's a dangerous place to be. Because you can either make it. Or you can break it. And so it comes back to you. back to you. Somebody tonight is going to receive a break. I feel that in my spirit. I just feel that in my spirit. Let's worship the Lord. One more song. Whatever's on your heart, let's sing. Just get lost in worship tonight, everybody. sing this song tonight I want you to mean it every word that has been spoken mean it tonight just mean it tonight mean every word you sing tonight every word that comes out of your mouth mean it if it's all you want help me know you
play on the instruments now. Just worship God on the instruments. Every one of you that's here tonight, I want you to raise your hand in submission to God. Everyone that is online that is watching, if you are serious about God tonight, I want you to raise your hand in submission to God. I believe that God answers prayer. I don't believe that if we pray that we must leave a back door open. I believe that when we pray, God will answer our prayer. And if God doesn't answer our prayer the way we want it to, it means that God knows better. And so tonight, if you have a special prayer request, if you have a special prayer need that's on your heart, whatever that prayer need is, I want you to get ready. But before I pray over that prayer need, I want Pastor Bob to come and I want him to lead us in prayer for two things. I want you to pray for protection over the body of Christ and I want you to break the spirit of fear tonight. Two things. Two things. That's the spirit will lead you. Protection over the body of Christ. Everyone here in the church, everyone online, and break the spirit of fear. Now we know that if that spirit is prevalent in anyone here or anyone online, if they believe tonight that spirit is broken. Amen? Amen. You believe it, I believe it. Do you believe it tonight? Do you believe it tonight? Raise your hands, raise your hands. And get ready. Pastor Bob prays everyone online and everyone in the church you've just made a declaration today you haven't just sung a song you see when you when we sing in church when we worship in church we are making utterances from our spirit man and the Bible says that you have the power of life and you have the power of death that is why God says, you choose. Whatever you choose is okay. But I'm giving you the right to choose. I'm not going to force your hand to choose. No. God says, you choose. If you want the world, be my guest. If you want life, it's open. And tonight... I do believe very strong in my spirit that all you need is a mustard seed faith. I wish I had a mustard seed here today. Actually, if I even, even if I had it, you can't see it. There's mustard seed. You can't even see it. It's so small. And that's all they need protection and we're breaking a spirit of fear because if fear is prevalent in your life listen to what I'm saying tonight if fear is prevalent in your life somebody needs this word tonight Pastor Bob you're going to break this thing the Holy Spirit on you 
and this thing is going to be gone in Jesus name Amen. if you have the spirit of fear in you whatever level of fear you have you must know that you're already dicing with your destiny you already got the dice in your hands and you're dicing with your destiny because God says I have not given you that spirit he says I've given you a spirit of what of love and of power and of a sound mind why a sound mind because it is common sense to know that if God be for you then who can be against you and it's about time some people break that and cross over the threshold into the land that God has destined for them too long have we dulled and we've come close and we went back we've come close and we went back we've come close and we went back we were just there to get that miracle but fear has pulled us back why because we think we can't do it because we think that everything in the word is just writing but it is a rhema word it is life and spirit and it is the truth that sets you free are you ready tonight are you ready tonight to get this break fear is going to be gone and protection so we start with fear let's come first and let's hit this head on and then cover them same with everyone online amen you ready pastor bob you want to worship a little you ready you ready let's go let's start to pray pray thank those of you, you that lord. can thank pray you lord. thank you lord 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 thank you Iramaya kamando itara baye tere baye toro bonda ra baye nde kuriya ra bo ndara ba she ndere baye nde mara maya kamato irama she nde itara baye tere baye toro bo ndara ba ye nde mandara ba she ndere baye ndo rakama ye koto irama she nde itara baye tere baye toro bo ndara ba ye Bondo marasha ndaraba yende ikarama yeko torobo ndaraba shendere beye ndorobondo and tonight uh, we come again fear fear will have to leave fear will have to diminish fear will have to disappear we come against you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we come again against you in the power of the blood of Jesus i want to remind you fear you have no place in this house ora marendo rekama shende rendere beyen doro bondara bayendo fear left to lay fear left to go fear has to go fear has to go we find and rebuke we cancel and nullify you we trample over you Gorama rendere be shendara bayen doro bondo gokara mayende fill this place lord with your glory tonight fill this place with your love tonight fill this place with the anointing tonight fear will have to disappear in the name of jesus for god has not given us the spirit of fear but he given us the spirit of power love and of a sound mind mandoro borendere be iramaya kamando itaraba shetere be itoro bondara ba yendere be yendoro bondo oh we honor you tonight we glorify your name tonight we magnify your name tonight we uplift your name tonight the name above every other name oh every knee will bow every tongue will confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god oh ramandorobo rekamash 
terrible. We put a blood seal over the body of Christ. We seal them with the blood of Jesus. Everyone will be protected by the blood, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Kamarondo, Rekamasheke Terebe. Lord, seal them with the blood of Jesus. Seal them with the word of God. Seal them with the anointing. Seal them with the fire. Seal them with the rain. Seal them with the with the anointing, oh God. Koramandorobo, Rekamashende. The body of Christ will rise up to the occasion. We will declare war to every enemy that is coming against the church of God. The sleeping giant is going to rise up. Oh, hallelujah. To declare war against the kingdom of darkness. Shaka mare terebe. Hiramandoro boyen terebe. Father, every individual that is here tonight. I pray for them, oh God. I pray for their family, their husband, the, the wife, the children, the home, their property, the vehicle, their work. Hallelujah. We pray and we sprinkle the blood on each and every one here tonight. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. You are free. You are free. You are free. You are free from the clutches of the enemy, from the powers of darkness. You are free. your name tonight we will not be intimidated by any demon tonight we want to remind you devil you are nothing you are a fallen angel you are a spirit looking for a body you are an alien in this land you know you are nothing you are nothing you are nothing the blood of Jesus Christ has destroyed you on the hallelujah you are nothing Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And make my life whole again. Spirit move over me. Spirit move over me. thank you tonight as a church as a body of Christ as sons and daughters that are honoring you tonight online and here in your house we say thank you today thank you for breaking that spirit of fear and thank you for your protection now as we will hear your word Give us, O oh God, Balparazan. It's not just a fancy word, Lord, that we've learned, but it is a rhema word. It is filled with spirit. It is filled with truth. It is filled with life. That you are our God of the breakthrough. And tonight I pray 
that every wandering thought, every tired spirit, I rejuvenate it in the atmosphere tonight. I arrest every wandering thought. I bring it to the subjection of the Holy Spirit. Let this word penetrate deep down into the spirit man. And somebody tonight is going to have a whole new world. Because of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. On, for those of you that are joining us online, as a church here in, uh, at the family church, it is our second day of a three-day fast. So that means if it's the second day of a three-day fast, when does the fast end? So the guys are laughing at me. They don't want to give me an answer. Some say today. Those who said today... We're going to rewind the clock and let them start again. It's a second day of a three-day fast. How many of you are feeling strong tonight? Amen. And that means tomorrow we conclude. I'm going to pray after the church tonight, online as well, over families after the service. And everyone that's here, you'll get ready for that blessing. God says that we must call upon him and he will show us great and mighty things. Now, you know, you can come and read the word. And unless you got the word like fire shut up in your bones. It's just writing on a page. And I believe that every one of you have that ability. Some of you are carrying that. Some of you desire to be there. And I do believe that God will bring you there to that place of having his word like fire shut up in your bones. That when you speak, when you in discussions, in meetings, in conferences, with friends, with family, wherever you may be. You will speak the word in a way where you will get the attention of the lost, the unsaved, the confused, the backslidden, the cold, the lukewarm. And through that word, God will save his children all because of your personal passion to have his word in you. Look at that. Your personal passion to have his word in you. Don't ever be discouraged and say, God, when is it my turn? God, when is it going to happen for me? God, why hasn't it happened yet? God, what is wrong with me? One of the big mistakes the body of Christ makes is that they tend to think every time and I want you to catch this. If you catch anything tonight, catch this. That they tend to think that when things are not going right that there's something wrong with them a huge mistake in the body of Christ now help me tonight by giving me your undivided attention everyone that's here if you want to get tonight if you want to get a rhema rhema word a word that's going to give you a major break catch this word tonight and the lie that the devil speaks to his children, Pastor Bob, is this. Because every one of us has a mind and our minds tend to wander. That is why when we prayed earlier, we brought everyone's wandering mind to the subjection of the spirit. We have to do that. 
if we don't bring our mind to the subjection of the spirit, then our mind will be subject to the contrary spirits. It has to be subject to the Holy Spirit. And it is a process, granted, to get to the place where our mind is subject to the Holy Spirit. There are people pre-COVID that are unfortunately in the same place they were then now spiritually. But yet there are people that have grown so much in COVID that it even surprises them how they've grown. Two sets of people. You choose which set you are. And be honest in that choosing. Because you can bluff yourself, but you can't bluff God. We all know that. You remember when you were young? And you tried to mess around and you try and puzzle here and there. Your father will tell you, hey, you can bluff me, but you can't bluff God. Your father told you that. My father told me that too. And it doesn't hit you then. Because you're young. And when you're young, you still got a lot of growing to do. So, what is green then, for a person who's longer in the faith, could be ripe. Because he's caught that word, he's understood it. And he's walked in it. It is like the advice I gave to a young girl who came for counseling with the granny. And in that time of counseling, I said, if there's anything you can do, and I'm going to make, give you the counsel and conclude with the session. But it may just go over your head. But I can guarantee you one day, you'll be your granny's age that's sitting here in this office. And you're going to say that to somebody. Put God first. And people don't understand the power of putting God first. And what it means to put God first. And so I want to minister to you before we conclude by 8.30 p.m. tonight. In case you want to plan your evenings. You can get your kettle ready. For those of you in some of the zones, load shedding is at 10 p.m. This is not an ESCOM advert. <laughs> Don't give up. Don't give up. The... Sad reality of life is this. That so many Christians start to think and question that when things are not going right in their lives, they do like Job and think, am I? In sin. Job is one of the most powerful sermons on humility that one can ever read. If you really think about what I'm just saying. Because at that level of humility for his wife to say what she said. And you all know what his wife said. You all know what his wife said. Who, who doesn't know? Be honest now, I'll tell you. If you don't know, I'll tell you tonight. Don't be shy if you don't know. Everyone knows. Okay, good. If you're shy, if you, you're lost out, you can go do some homework later. But to be at that level when his wife had made that statement and said, do this to God and rather And he loses everything he has. And yet he still says, My Redeemer liveth. That's a place to be. And I want you to think about it. 
put yourself in Job's shoe, you lost all your wealth, all your assets, you lost your children, they dead and gone. And you still say, my Redeemer lives. Some may say that's faith. But I can guarantee you in this day that we are living in, the people will be like how Job had started off and said, what sin is in me that God can allow such tragedy to strike? I speak to you tonight on don't give up. Because here's the point. You're either growing old or you're growing up. One of the two. I've said it many times. And I will say it for as long as I live. You're either growing old or you're growing up. Some people think they're growing up, but they're really growing old. And that's the reality of the, of the whole issue of this walk with God. You cannot fool yourself. Only you know your relationship with God and only you know where you are with God. And so this is the reality of the whole matter with our walk with God. That anything that is going wrong in our lives is an opportunity to say, God, I'm so grateful because I know that I'm on track. I know that I am on track because this walk with Christ is not for sissies. You heard the word I used? Sissies. Yeah, go and put it somewhere and say this pastor's talking slang. I'm giving you a layman's term. Some of you won't understand another term I use. But really speaking, the walk with Christ is not for sissies. Think about what I'm saying tonight. Because God has entrusted you with so much. And if you're going to give up at the first discouragement, the first letdown, the first rumor, the first gossip, the first opportunity that you miss and it doesn't work out for you and you're going to give up you might as well just stop worshipping God and give up but the fact is this that God has entrusted us to be overcomers and the longer we take to overcome that journey will become a little bit more treacherous. But the quicker we understand, this is a war that we are fighting. Some of you don't believe what I'm saying. But Christianity is a spiritual battle that you and I are fighting. It is not a happy, clappy, get rich quick scheme. It is a spiritual battle that you are fighting. Amen. Stop praying and see what's going to happen to your life. Man, I'm getting passionate about this word. Go and read the book of Job when you have a chance. And you see how Job had been through the experience that he had. And the experience that he had been... He still hung on to God because he knew that there is a greater picture. Even though it did not happen. Even though my children got killed and taken away. I was looking for my Bible earlier. I don't know where I left it, babes. I don't know if I left it the car. I highlighted and everything with the new highlighters you got for me. And it's not here. I wanted to show the people. But anyway. Four times you must go and read in the book of Job. Four times. The messenger came and told him the bad news four times. Go and read the bad news and put yourself in Job's shoe and see how you would have handled that bad news. The devil is determined to divide the church. I had a rude awakening with Uncle Angus, a rude awakening. But it was a good awakening because I know as a church we... On the path 
to where God wants us to be. I know it. I feel it in my spirit. I don't need anybody to come and convince me anymore. I know it as the shepherd of the church. I know it. Am I being arrogant? No, I'm just confident because I'm talking to God. If you're not talking to God, then you'll be confused. If you're talking to God, you will know. And if there's strange fire that's coming in your ears from other sources, you will immediately know it. You'll be kind and say, ah, okay, 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 bless you, bless God, praise God, praise God. But you'll know that it is strange fire. And that's where God wants you to be, to be able to discern what is strange fire for your life. Because it could just make or it could just break your generations that are coming after you. Every one of you have a responsibility. In our hands, we carry the responsibility of our children's 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 children. This is not for sissies. I repeat. Man, some of you are going to be phoning and saying, Pastor, how can you preach like that? Well, I'm giving you the facts. So the devil is determined to break up the church. He's determined to break up families. He's determined to break up relationships. Look at what's happening now with the pandemic. People don't want to even come out of their houses. They don't want to come out. There's a huge percentage that are not even coming out of their houses. Yesterday's voting wasn't as what they envisaged it to be because the numbers did not go out and put the tick. By the way, I got my, I'd even mad a bath still can't come out. I did bath, I'm just to tell you. But here's the thing. The devil wants to break up the church and yet people still can't see it. Churches are fighting churches. Pastors are disagreeing and arguing with pastors and bringing the fight to social platforms. Husbands are fighting wives. Children are fighting parents. Parents are fighting children. Friends are fighting friends. And the devil is sitting back and he's laughing and he's saying, I got them where I want them. And yet God is saying, don't. Give up. And everybody wants to give up. The question of, is your church allowing you to come into the church? And uh, what about the vaccine? Are you got the triple six here? Or you couldn't? Listen, my dear friend, I say this with a lot of respect to everyone that's watching and everyone here. Stop arguing and stop having discussions about whether you're vac vaccinated or whether you're not. Ask the question, are you a believer of Jesus Christ? Have you got a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Are you serious about your walk with God? The vaccine and all that is secondary and don't make that the primary because the devil wants to take uh, the focus of God and put it on what the world is going through right now. And if you haven't discerned that yet, then something is drastically wrong. I told you a few weeks ago that there are husbands in the church that are vaccinated and wives that are not. And vice versa. Not only in this church, but in many churches. And if we're going to be foolish and say, no, we're going to start focusing on this pandemic to the way that the world wants us to. I'm not saying be irresponsible now. No. Because God's given us sufficient wisdom to be responsible and not be foolish and emotional and get carried away. You cannot get carried away when you're in the spirit. God will protect you and God will guide you in saying and doing the right thing. How many that you know are in a place today... Where there is division that's taking place. Now let me say this to you. That if you are going through a very trying time in your life right now. And things are not working out for you. Suffering is not always because of sin. Job wasn't in sin. Job was a righteous man. Yet he suffered. He could have given up any time. He had all the good reasons and excuses to give up. 
He could have had the biggest following of people who pitied him. And let me tell you, there are thousands of those people around you every day. Some of you may be even like that. Where you pity people who are going through what they're going through. But if you understand the bigger picture is that God is preparing them. And this battle that we walk, this journey with God is a warfare. And it is not a walk in the park. That is why every one of us are accountable to God. You cannot be fearful as a child of God. Never. If you have fear in you, that means you're fearing something. What is it you're fearing? You could be fearing the law because you did something wrong. Or you could be fearing man because of whatever reason. You could be fearing your wife because you did something wrong. But I'm saying, well if that is the case, you should fear you if you did something wrong. But I'm, I'm joking. But here's the thing. Fear is from the devil. And fear will cause you to make foolish decisions. It wasn't a lack of faith as some people may tell you. That you got no faith. That's why you are where you are. Don't listen to Christians who tell you. Because things are not working out in your life. It's a lack of faith. Tonight I want you to change your thinking. And get your mind right. You're in a warfare. The devil wants you killed. He wants you destroyed. He wants you taken out. If you don't understand that plan of ease, then you don't understand the plan and the battle that we are in. It's not against flesh and blood, by the way, but it's against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. So if you're going to keep thinking that you are in sin or what is wrong with me and you're going to put yourself down, then you're already 10 steps back. You need to know you're on a right path with God and God is going to take you and it's not about blessings. You see, Job went through such a test. And at the end of Job's life, you know the word, you read the story, God gave him double, and as some preachers entitled the sermon, they call it double for all his trouble. And he was a wealthy man. He ended up with double. But it wasn't so much the material things for him to get at the end of his life. Because what does it matter? I'm old now. What am I have all this wealth for? It was more than that. It was kingdom. It was eternal. More for what he got here. Because all that he had there. We come into this world with nothing. We leave with nothing. No fented trailers. No trucks behind us. Nothing. When we're going down to the cemetery. You taking nothing with you. Absolutely nothing. Every one of us must be in a place of knowing that we're in warfare. Christianity is not for sissies. I say it for the fourth time. The day you accepted the Lord is the day the devil began his plot against you. And for those of you that are married, the day you walk down the aisle and you took your vows, I do, is the day the enemy came and he's put his best team to break up that marriage. And that is why some of us are so foolish and we do foolish things. And when we fight and argue, we want to give up on the marriage, not knowing that we are on line with what God wants and where God is taking us. The devil wants to kill us and that is part of his plan. And we're falling hook, line and sinker and we say, let's give up. I give up. I can't do this. Take it all, I'm ending. Why are we so foolish? And we don't understand. Tell me. Let's be real. Why? Why don't we understand that? It's an it's a easy thing to understand. The day I go through challenges with Portia. And I go through whatever. Maybe she and I have marital issues. It does not mean that I must break up and say the D word. One day. I did a service for a young couple. And dedicated their home. I felt in my spirit I needed them to bring a dictionary. Because there was a spirit in that tribe. And I didn't want to follow this group. 
I said, buy a dictionary and bring it to the service. They brought it. In that service, the Holy Spirit led. She was there that night. The Holy Spirit led. I said, go to the word divorce in the dictionary. Now tear that whole page out. And we seal that marriage. They're still strong up until today. Sometimes you got to do radical things to get the results. It's a spirit that's coming to break up. When something happens, you lose your job, you get sick, you get affected, your finances. Don't ask God what is wrong with you. Don't ask him that. Nothing is wrong with you. Push in and pray and get to the battle in prayer. And in your time of prayer, God will speak to you and God will redeem you. And God will also give you the understanding of what's happening. You don't need to put yourself down. You're in a battle. You are in a battle. If the devil can't kill you, he'll steal from you. If he can't steal from you, he'll destroy you. Some people are walking dead. The devil's killed them. They're just existing. Because on the inner man, they got no life. The inner spirit is dead to the things of God. Nothing awakens the inner spirit up. They're just existing like zombies, literally. Your spirit needs to be alive and connected. Can somebody say amen? amen. It takes a live fish to swim upstream. Any dead fish can go with the flow. It takes a live fish. And you are that live fish. You're not a dead fish. You're a live fish. And so go upstream and against the flow. Don't go with the flow. You'll find yourself in big trouble. To persevere takes humility. We must have humility. When we are wrong and you can admit it and apologize... When you are right and can still have a humble attitude and say, Lord, what can I learn? No arrogance to prove you are right even. Just do it in love. That's God's way of doing it. God wants mature believers and those are the ones who will be strong soldiers and endure on the cross. Now Paul teaches us as we conclude in 2 Corinthians 4, 7. Everyone stand with me. Some of you here, some of you online might be really discouraged and thinking that you are out and you don't know where to go. I'm here to remind you according to God's word tonight that you're in a battle. And God has equipped you for this battle. Because you may be down, but I can guarantee you, you are not out. And you need to have that spirit of boldness on the inside of you to say and look at the devil square in his face and say, devil, get thee behind me. <music> 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side. But the Bible says we are not crushed. And I want you to remember that tonight. You may be hard pressed on every side. Things are not working out for you. Things are just going totally haywire. But you're not crushed. You may be perplexed. But you're not in despair. You may be persecuted. And look in this. Listen to this. Persecuted. A few words as synonyms of persecuted. Watch this. You may be wronged. You may be mistreated. You may be victimized. You may be offended. You may be oppressed. But not abandoned. So if God has given you that assurance. Why look down and give up and throw in the towel? You may be struck down, but I can tell you, dear friends, you're not out. 
when you are knocked down, God is just simply toughening you up. You need to read this spiritually. If you're going to talk to carnal people, you're going to get carnal talk. If you're going to read God's word, you'll understand it clearly that when you are getting knocked down, God is making you stronger. Amen. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't lose hope. Don't even blame God. Please. Don't even fight with people and don't blame anyone or any situation. Remember, you are in a war. You're a soldier. You must know your enemy. And the enemy is the devil and not people. Fight him in the spirit. Some days you see me in church. You see me there. And people look at me and it, some of people who maybe come for the first time to church and they think, hey, this guy's gone crazy. Who's he talking to? He's speaking, he's speaking. He's, well, look, I'm praying in tongues. I'm fighting against spirits. I'm pulling down strongholds. And I'm saying, God, I'm ready for this war and this battle. And when I come onto this platform, I'm not coming here leading the way. I'm following you. So you go ahead of me, Holy Spirit. I dare not go there without you in front of me. Go and lead me as I come onto this platform. And that is the attitude we must have every day of our lives. Spirit, lead me. And God will lead. God will lead. Every one of you, bow your heads with me today. Every one of you that's online, I want you to bow your heads in prayer. I'm going to pray for every family, every marriage, every boy, every girl, every husband, every wife, every individual, whether you're married, whether you're single, you're a spinster, you're a bachelor, whatever you may be, widow, widower, whoever you are tonight, I'm praying a blessing over your life. I'm doing what God says. God says that we must make our request known and we pray in the spirit. And we effect change in the natural. Let us raise our hands right now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you tonight. Everyone that has their hands raised here in the church those at home online or even at work or wherever they're watching from thank you God that they understand tonight not to give up for God we want to get deeper with you let us grow up and let us understand this walk with you is a walk by faith and not by sight because in our sight everything goes wrong but in faith it's going to be all right And tonight I pray this blessing over your life. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. How many of you feel you are in distress tonight? Say amen. May the name of the God of Jacob always protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary. And grant you support from Zion. And may he remember all your sacrifices. And may he accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart. And make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy over your victory. And lift up our banners in the name of our God. And may the Lord grant you all your requests. And now this I know the Lord gives victory to his anointed. Who is his anointed? You are his anointed. You online I is anointed. You are God's anointed. And he has said that he gives you victory. 
and he answers him from his heavenly sanctuary with the victorious power of his right hand and some may trust in chariots and some may trust in horses but we will trust in the name of our God say I will trust in the name of my God come on say I will trust in the name of my God say I will trust in the name of my God say I will trust in the name of my God say I will trust in the name of my God I will trust in the name of my God say I will trust in the name of my God Lord give us the victory and answer us when we call give the Lord a shout of praise tonight Father tonight I pray over every family that's here and online I pray God that they will always stand up strong and never give up for those of you that were on the brink of giving up and say, this is it, I'm tired, uh, I'm giving up. Uh, I pray that you have got the rhema word and you understand uh, that this is uh, a battle uh, that you and I are in. Uh, and when you are tough, uh, when you are knocked down, uh, when you are shaken, uh, you are not taken out. Uh, you are being toughened up uh, by the Holy Spirit. Uh, God uh, is toughening you up uh, for greater days uh, that lie ahead. And I pray that you will stand in a whole new measure, in a whole new round you will stand. You will stop your bad behavior, you will stop your bad ways and we will worship the Lord our God and trust Him wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly we trust Him. In Jesus mighty name, Amen. Now before you leave I think it was before lockdown I promised the church that we're going to be having a conference and I think I've said it on one or two online meetings that we are going to be having a conference and the conference is not how to get rich by the way I promised you that we're going to be having a conference on a subject called offense. Everyone is going to be offended. Everyone. Get ready for the month of November. I really want you to seek God in the month of November as we go through the subject. Those of you that belong to the church, I really mean it. Portia and I really mean it. We've experienced it we've walked we've understood we've learning we're learning more come with an open heart and stop looking at others and look at yourself for that's where it starts the victory starts with you not with others and so Father over the month of November I pray that as we will minister every Sunday on the subject of offense I prepare the atmosphere in this church I break Satan's power and I confuse his strategy and I pray God that your children will be set free from every bondage of offense and there will be a whole new level of authority and power that will come over the body of Christ here in this part of the vineyard. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Good night. And we will see you on Sunday.